So, well, thanks very much for picking this particular venue. And uh, I just want to read something to you, that, uh, just to start off. There are people that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and some people do not know, some people that have no idea what just happened. <laughs> so, so, you are in the first two categories as my audience. You are people who either make things happen or people who watch things happen. Because you're definitely not people who just have no idea what just happened. So the thing is, uh, by the way, my name is Ithil Uh If you're English and therefore linguistically handicapped, you can call me Max. <laughs> it's kind of an icebreaker, insult your host nation. But, uh, okay. So the thing is, uh, this is a, a, what I would call a very interactive workshop, which is another term for I'm desperately in need of your feedback. It's the sense that uh, I've been working a variety of subjects for the last 20 years, studied architecture, going to sculpture, installation, community art, set design, and currently teaching. I'm now moving into creative consultancy. And uh, it's a very kind of strange world. And I'm kind of figuring my footing in this creative consultancy. And uh, I'm just kind of, like last year, I drew examples from community art, kind of pulling out examples from community art. This particular turn, since they gave me 40 minutes, I decided to, okay, let's actually make this work both ways. Because I desperately need to work with you in 40 minutes to produce what I call user-centered or user-friendly creativity workshop. Because the context very much is this idea that, ooh, let's get creative. Let's all get on innovation. And it hit me actually in, in January, kind of just basically lost sleep that night, because the question that pops into my mind, what are we asking people to do when we shove them in a creativity session? <laughs> You know, let's get creative. Let's just now we innovate. What does it actually mean for the person being subjected to it? So it's kind of kind of figuring out, okay, let's then step back. Instead of rushing forward, say, let's all go and innovate. I mean, Lord Sugar is not in hiring a person to work for him, he's looking for a partner. <coughs> Second year or uh, secondary schools are working on theme-based learning, so people learn to connect the dots. So it's that kind of, okay, it's a lot of this design economy going on. Okay? What does it actually mean for the person? And for me as a facilitator, what I want to try to figure out with you is the sense of, okay, what does the participant go through and how can I make it better for the participant? So I kind of just understand this, you know, we had a lovely, lovely talk earlier in Galala Eden when he was particularly talking about this, what resists innovation. What are the factors that resist innovation? And Caroline Southern, Caroline Southern just delivered a talk on intolerance or tolerance to innovation or novelty. So there is a resistance to it. We're not all comfortable with innovation. So, my plan. This is it. So what was this idea of this idea of creativity? Is it magical or mythical? Or is it something that can be become? I've taken certain poetic license with the English language. It's basically to cover my ass if I make a spelling <laughs> mistake. But the idea of, you know, my role as a facilitator. Am I some kind of a shaman? Who will take you on a mystical journey to discover the world of creativity inside you? Or is it something that we can just start acknowledging with ourselves and that we already do or that we can start picking up. So this question of what does creativity mean for everybody? And that's part of my work as, as a facilitator is to demystify creativity. As meaning it's not just for the mad and the insane and the creative artist, it's the realm of everybody. So that's the kind of where I'm coming from on this. So the question is then, just to start as a basic, because there's a lot of definition about creativity, so I'm, 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 my favorite one is pretty straightforward, but I just want to figure out, as a kind of raised up hand, is there a difference between 
imagination and creativity. So, those who say yay, is there a difference? Fifteen? Nay. Four, five, six. <laughs> okay, so there is a difference. All right? From where I come from, and my mentality is that there is creativity is applied imagination. And there's something coming from Ken Roberts. He has a lovely kind of process called imagination, medium, skill, creativity. So there's an imagination which comes out very early in us when our parents ask us, have you done your homework? Yes, Dad. <laughs> We have now proposed a completely fanciful world that says, I just did my homework when I didn't. So very early on, we start using our imagination. For me, creativity comes after when you take imagination through a medium and gain skill with it. I can creatively use English. It is the third language I studied. It is something that is a medium to express myself. I gain skill in it by talking to everybody everywhere all the time. But it is a medium to express my imagination. So that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from. So, if we go back to the creativity workshops, and I want to ask you, kind of just get feedback from you, especially for me as a facilitator. What is your ideal first response to a creative facilitator? Basically, should I wear a tie? Or is it okay like this? I've chosen to accentuate my shamanic <laughs> aura. <laughs> but the idea is, from you as a user, what do you want to feel when you walk into it? Because your boss says, you've got to go on innovate. You've got to sign up for Creativity 101 so we can, you know, do our thing. So what comes to mind as a sense of what do you ideally want to feel? The connection and authenticity, starting where, where I am. Gives me a very difficult English word. <laughs> connection, authenticity. Uh, to be relaxed. I'm failing there. I'm just shaking in my boots. So, okay, I'll try to get more relaxed. Say again? Inspiring. Inspiring. Okay, becoming. Can I just say inspiring? Inspiring? Yeah? yeah. But it's a first reaction. How do I. How do I <sighs> <laughs> become inspiring to you without saying anything? What's that? All right, that's a challenge. Um, have a sense of. Humor? <laughs> okay. All right. The ability to question uh, the audience mindset or perspective. Who? Challenge? Perception. Yeah? Yeah. Like I challenge the linguistic ability of the English to actually pronounce my name. Yeah. Or was that just insulting? <laughs> okay. Yes. Challenge? Um, asking different questions. I mean, um, we talk about first impression here, just not the process, but the first impression. Intrigued. Intrigue. Because it's good for me to know, to kind of have this in the back of my mind. Authority. Authority. It's another odd word. Authority. <laughs> Authority. Okay. As being, as being led by the person. As being the expert. Ooh. <laughs> okay. All right. That's frightening. Spirituality. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> no pressure. All right. Last one. Openness. Okay. I want to be reassured it's not work. Not work. Yes. Yes. Guaranteed, guaranteed play. Yes, guaranteed, guaranteed play. play. <laughs> <laughs> All 
write guacamole instead of guarantee. <laughs> no, <idea. laughs> I have no idea. That, that just looks, yeah, that's shorthand for guaranteed. All right. Good. That's quite a list. I bet it is about now. <laughs> okay. No, it's good. Because it just kind of sends off. Because it, I guess part of this all, I guess, is the idea of relaxed and humor is this notion of, of play. We need to just kind of chill as a sense of creativity. We can't force creativity to appear 9.15. So it's the idea of calming, which is a little bit I'll talk about later, it says of expectations. But for most people to step in, Okay, can I say unconditional love? We talked about love this morning. You are all unconditionally loved by me. How's that? Sorry. Good. All right. So I know I did my time. Anyway. Good. So, question about creativity. If I talk about creativity, a sense of attitude. Because I'm really trying to focus on this idea before we step into a medium. What do we start with? What do we start with when it comes to, you know, this is kind of my list of, okay, is creativity about these things? Is creativity about perception, critical thinking, skill, emotion, intuition, Action, confidence, is that S or a C? C. Thank you. See, this is what I call poetic license. Fearlessness, faith, and courage. Just I kind of wrote down a couple of things that I say, okay, <coughs> is that part of creativity, part of imagination, part of being innovative? I think they facilitate creativity. Say again? I think they facilitate creativity. There's soil conditions for creativity to yeah. grow. I wouldn't include critical thinking. Okay. We'll question that. Pourquoi? As in French, why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to apologize for my French because, you know. Anyway. I just think critical thinking pays into the logical, rational side of the brain. And oh. Creativity is more about connection making and intuition. Okay. Could it be thinking okay. differently or critical thinking? Or reflection. Okay. Interestingly, you did you did say is do they in, are they included in creativity? Then you said in other things and innovation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would include it in innovation. But I wouldn't include it in creativity. Okay. The because reason it's the I, application side. Yeah, the reason I put it in is that for me critical thinking is this ain't right. As not as a sense of, oh we have a problem to solve. Mm -hmm. You look at the world and say, it's not right. It's not quite right. Because I can have a sponge and a rubber glove just doesn't feel the right thing to clean my toilet. Mm. I want a brush. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm yeah. in innovative thinking. Yeah. It's, this, it's this applying the creativity Activity. to a real world solution. solution. Okay. Whereas the creativity is, you know, you can create and create and create and without any application, yeah. and that's okay. That, was that would be how I would differentiate between creativity and innovation. And innovation. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, belongs to... Innovation. Because Adi, uh, Eden was, yeah, you were talking about this notion of, that he was talking about earlier, about this difference between invention and innovation. Mm -hmm. We have a problem, invention solves the problem, innovation delivers profit through the solution. Sorry, Galel, I didn't mean no, to... I was just going to say, I think that they're all included really, because mm -hmm. innovation is not a one-sided thing, it's not one phase, it's multiple phases. And Thanks. at some point you need to be 
not so critical, and at some phase you need to be critical to mm. put that out things that are implausible. <coughs> okay. So I think I would add to that list of yours something like inclusive inclusiveness or in including things that are seemingly implausible at the beginning. So we can include things yeah. and inclusive, yeah, yeah integrating yeah. inclusive, inclusive uh, attitude to things. Inclusivity, non-judgment. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which is this? Okay, yeah. No. So you can take the thing and, and it's opposite at the same time. It works yeah, as yeah. a rule. Inclusivity, and so why is that? Inclusivity and non-judgment. Okay. What about creativity being transcendent, transcendental? It goes beyond the norm. God as a collaborator. <laughs> Which comes into faith. Mm. Please make it. But it is also the sense of, we talk about knowledge being transferred through the ages, endless ages. Wisdom comes from various places. So, having God on your side, yeah. I mean, not necessarily, um, you know, within faith, but something that one does where he or she becomes, or she, she looks like crazy to the others, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's just being creative, being different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that tolerance? Is it toler tolerance? Uh, well, it does come into courage, the courage to be different. All right? How about trust? Trust came up a lot this morning when we were talking. Trust. Your needing as a, as a condition or the soil. Okay. So you got to trust your friend. All right. Cool. Is that one more yep. Willingness to make mistakes. Ooh. To fail. Mm. Maybe and that might come on to, uh, to quote a genius poet, play to fail. Yeah. And Winston Churchill. Churchill. Is it Churchill or Churchill? Success is to fail and fail and fail without any loss of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. Cool. Da, da, da. A plan of action here. <laughs> da, da, da. Da, da, da. Oh yes. So. We're now moving into this notion of we kind of have it covered about what is creativity, what is imagination. So that's our subject matter. And I'm, as your designated facilitator, okay. trying to get you to work with me. So we talk about conditions, we talk about definitions. And we're kind of getting to know, okay, we've, we've now established kind of a common ground. What are we talking about? So the question is then, What are the participants' thresholds? Because this is, and this is kind of the, the kind of crux of what I want to talk about. This idea of this talk as about the quest is the sense of we're all rushing forward towards innovation, design economy, and da 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 da. What is actually holding us back could be just as important. So it's not about you know you've got to learn this and do this, and you've got to know which if you're wearing. Bono's red hat or black hat, and then da 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 da. What are the thresholds? So, in my work as a facilitator, I've come up with I just started the list with three, which is this I can't. You know, I mean, your list is more elaborate about, you know, kind of attitude, but the same kind of thing is that I don't know how to, which is this notion of because it's a new medium, I have there disqualified myself from expressing myself. So it's for me, it's, it's, it's uh, what did I wrote? It's personal, practical, and then social. It's notion of, I don't know how to. And I've, I've, especially when I'm working with people, is that, you know, first acknowledge you're creative, and then you're gonna have to express it through food. Well, let's say if I were asked to write a, a piece of poetry, it would frighten me. I would say, I can't, or I don't know how to, I don't know prose, I don't know haiku style. So what are other thresholds that come to mind that I then have to kind of say, okay, because my job is to get you over the threshold and get you rolling. And pretty much 
get you comfortable with your uncomfortability? Discomfort. <laughs> Discomfort. <laughs> uncomfortability is like our poetic language. I like that. Uncomfortability. Discomfort. Okay. All right. So, give me more thresholds. Basically, just just personally. Fear of failure. Will it make me any money? I don't think so. Profit? Or uh, benefit not, issue? No, not even profit. I, I'm always looking for the money. The money. Just, just, just money. money. <laughs> <laughs> but also, what's the use? There is a, there's no point. Oh. Well. That's different. Yeah, this, this is no use to anybody. Why would I want to do that? Okay. So, so that's definitely a threshold to stop people to stop people from getting started. Mm. This is practical intention. Yeah. Practical output question. Yeah. Purpose. Mm. Purpose. Purpose. Load of nonsense. Yeah, but your boss just sent you your your yeah, line manager it. sent yeah. you to a creativity lesson. Yeah, yeah. You know, creativity session. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have to show up and. Yeah. You can't make innovate. me. <laughs> You can't. Nobody can make me do this. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. <laughs> it's not my game. I'm not playing. And then that's that sound with your tongue. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Can't make me. So, any other something that comes to mind as a sense of being confronted and you know with this notion of okay, now you're supposed to get creative or. Maybe not even creative. I mean, it probably goes back to being asked to do something that you've never done before. Yes, I don't understand. That's a big one. Yeah, I just do don't understand. To, to make yeah. Yeah. Is, is that a threshold or an enabler? Disabler. Too deep there, but... It's an enabler, actually. If you what? Keep, I think it's more of an enabler of innovation. If you keep saying to yourself that you don't understand, then you try to understand. Yeah, but as a, st no. a stopper, I've had as a stopper, people in yeah. workshops yeah. just say, no, 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 I don't understand the task. And they just, it's like a, yeah. a, it's like like a, a brick wall. Yeah. Yeah. Put yeah. that in the room. Yeah. Because the, the thing is that as a facilitator... Yeah, I have another one. I like it, but I don't have time. Ooh. Yeah, I don't have time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it, it's something that we talked about, the, the lady, the photographer this morning, was this idea that as artists we sit and kind of watch and just relax and watch, pause and relax and just focus on something. Nonsensical, but we give the time for the idea to come in. So this idea of not having time, yeah, because the benefit, is it benefit ratio or whatever it's called, this notion of what am I, that's the money, what am I getting out of this? I think there's also something about um, a fear of looking silly. Mm. So as I walked in today and I saw you in your shaman costume, I thought, I wonder if we're all going to have to stand in a circle and do something really silly and then I'll look silly. So, yeah. But I've led by example. I look the silliest. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the authority thing, I will lead you bravely into silly land because I'm... Yeah? Uh, I'm not creative. <laughs> Say again? Uh, I'm not creative. Oh, yeah. Ooh. But that's a bit like I'm not the type. Yeah, I'm not the type. Yeah. yeah. Or it would never work here. How about that one? Ooh. It's always the easiest way. Yeah. Wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't work here. So it's kind of predetermined that the end is never going to live up to yeah. whatever the effort. And I've been in quite a lot of workshops where it hasn't been explicitly expressed that it's sort of come out, it's sort of seeped out in other ways, that people are frightened to get heavily involved in the creative type of session because they think my job might change as a result of it and I'm going to have to do a whole load of new stuff or I'm going to have to do a load of stuff I eventually feel uncomfortable with, so they're frightened of the future, I guess. Mm. It'll end in tears. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but aren't, but aren't we working ourselves up to a, such a hype about innovation and creativity that if you don't take the creativity lesson 101, mm. you're just not going to be when the review board comes along. Yeah. 
So it's like I said, we're pushing people towards this, like 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 lemmings. What about it's fun but it's not work? And that's a bad thing. <laughs> okay. Well, for some people, yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. Like it's supposed to be doing work. I don't know. It's not work. Too much BL fun. <laughs> mm. Yeah. All right. No good. Because I mean, as a, as a facilitator, this one I gotta gotta kind of get people out of that, nudge them over this thing, and say, okay, I respect your feelings, I get your butt in gear, in the nicest way. So, so for me, it's, it's, it's because I, I probably, I don't, think I, I don't think I have an empathetic bone in my body, so it's, it's, this is probably the toughest thing. And for me, it's probably kind of this idea of, you know, I've been doing creative things or whatever, been a creative for 28 years, since whenever. So for me to then deal with people who don't, and I've sometimes I had a particular project with uh, adults with learning disability. They had been assigned to a creative workshop. They were excited. But they were the carers that worked with them, that worked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd work with a third party to get to my participants. Because they, there was nothing on their payroll about doing any of that. So that's what I run into. And sometimes when I work in schools, I will run a one and a half hour creativity workshop for the teachers of the kids that I work with to get everybody kind of on board. Yeah? So, this thing. Ask me something. This is this idea of fear. And I guess, and I'm, the way I figure, I mean, I've never worked in a corporation, but I'm assuming you're hired to know. You've been hired to do a job, and you're supposed to know. Part of this creativity is this courage to admit that I don't know. So this idea of, if you ask me anything from your subject area, ask me a question. But anything you specifically know. What is a nibble? What is? What is a nibble? Nibble. A nibble. Yeah. Is it a small bite? <laughs> half a bite. Half a bite. Okay. That half a bite. <laughs> now hit me. Hit me with questions. It's okay. I'm okay with being embarrassed of not knowing. But the idea is this, you know. I'm asking you to step into my creative space and dress like a shaman, exuding authority. Am I gonna make you silly? So this is your chance to make me look silly by asking me something from your subject expertise. No? What's the secret of life? Don't know. That was, that was, you know, I don't know. So how uncomfortable am I with this I don't know? I'm a line manager. I've got six people under me. I've got my boss above me. And you're asking me to step into a creative session and say, I don't know. Is that difficult for people? Some people. I, yeah. So okay. I think it depends on the, perhaps the culture that you work in generally. Okay. If there's a culture people admitting they don't know stuff, then yeah. someone might be more used to that. Yeah. I mean, Galel, you talked about earlier, this notion of, you know, certain cultures say, you know, to admit, you know, I'm wrong, I can't, mm. it's loss of faith. When I teach foreign architectural students who come to St. St. Martins, I tell everybody what to do tomorrow, and then I ask, anybody have any questions? And they all say no. Mm. And then I take my Asian students aside after everybody mm. has gone, and I ask them again, individually, because for them to say, I don't know, is a reflection of me. So they, they, you know, so it's this kind of, so I'm just kind of poking this issue about how uncomfortable is it for people to admit they don't know. In certain um, areas of business, if they actually don't see failure, or they don't um, acknowledge failure, but there's another, uh, like in arch architecture, Buildings are built upon uh, failing or uh, earthquakes or something like that. But in, within marketing, you're not allowed to fail. But that's something you do have to take into account. 
Okay. So are you talking? Okay, so, it's, it's, so, so it's, is it more about failure than ignorance? In a university, it would be more about ignorance. Mm. If you try to run, a, 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 heaven help us, try to run an innovation workshop within a university, the, the, what you would get is, you know, is mental barriers. You know, because people were taking things with evidence that fit their frameworks. and So it would be a lot about <coughs> things that they know. Okay. And things that they don't know that they don't know, and really don't care that they don't know them. I mean, they really <laughs> well, I mean, I mean arrogance, arrogance is, the, is the automatic ratio yeah. level of, of, you know, f you know fear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like self-pity and rage, you know, I mean, it's this, this kind of, you know... I mean, I hated new computer technology because I was bad at it until New Year's Resolution 2010. So, you know, I, I, I was totally against digital technology until 2010, because I was bad at it. So, I, you know, that's the arrogance comes in. Um, okay. I just want to think, um, I don't, um, not knowing for me is, I, I sometimes forget that it's not a permanent state of affairs that I can find out, but in the moment of not knowing, it feels like it'll go on forever. <laughs> it does put up the sky. Yeah, it's a great insight. Yeah. So that can be a comfort. So you don't know right now, don't worry. Alright, alright. So, where am I on oh my fabulous plan? Yo, this thing. Expectations. Something I picked up from a, a conference on uh, third cycle education, which is an elaborate term for PhD, in artistic research. They were, comp they were kind of looking at what is artistic research doing PhD in art. And one of the things that they talk about was this difference. And I'm wondering if that can be helpful as a tool to lower the blood pressure of I mean, the creativity workshop. It's just the expectations. In science, and this is a lot of the stuff we got, maybe deals with the knowing, is what you say true? Logically, scientifically, prove what you just said. But in design, the simple thing does it work? Yeah, your name. Does that help to kind of calm your expectations? You are a future hypothetical participant in a creativity workshop? I've seen contexts where that tech has been used. Um, I did a, 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 a Reiki training once, and the lady used this, exactly that. She said, you can argue with Oya, and I'm not going to go to the belief system. Just try it. Because okay. I'm telling you it works. All just, right. just do it, because it works. And it, it, it worked for her. It, worked for, it seemed to work in the, in, the, in the moment in that workshop. Okay. I would change that to creativity or... Um, <laughs> kind of let's let's see if it works rather than just it's because it's a closed question right. whereas creativity is an open process I think let's right. try it yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay alright okay thank you with you and with you so just you know yeah. oh, just be creative <laughs> let's just try it come on come on okay I think in science also I think most people have moved away from positivism it's not the question of true or false anymore, it's the question yeah. of whether does it gel together, does it, is it, does it cohere now? Because later you know that whatever theory you hold to be true, or you believe it, might be completely overturned, overturned by another one. So, you know, post-positivist and, and sort of non-positivist science actually is, is much more flexible and, and malleable about what is true and what is not and how long it stays true. So is science becoming like creativity? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, well, yeah. It's, yeah. in the sense of, you know, theories are... Uh, potentially false. Okay, so there's a so we are starting to question True. this attitude, and we're starting to go for this. You know, Just five minutes. Cool. I only have about two or three left. So, uh, what are we covered? Yes. So what I say is true. So the thing is that what I uh, my two slides here as a sense of. Because now it's a question of what I call the creative space. So we've started with first impression, we come in, 
Talk about definition of creativity, imagination. Talk about the participant's threshold. So to send me off from this particular talk with this notion of, okay, what, how do I do my job best? How do I kind of make it? So what are the, how do I do this? Boom. Yeah. I'll do it. Do I just? Can't do it. You missed a promo there, fine. So uh, this is the way I've broken down when it comes to community art as a sense of, I've been told that piecemeal is not a very good positive English word. So it's uh, it sometimes says, you know, a carefully constructed process is what I use. So I'm very clear on the process I make. You could say modular. Maybe. Modular, modular yeah. approach. Piecemeal, but yeah, it just means it's a bit hand to mouth. It's, it's rather informal. Yeah. It's modular, it's more planned. Modular, okay. So I do go, I do go through demystifying creativity as a sense of it can be become it. It's not magical, it's not spiritual, it's not assigned to a particular group of individuals. Validate individual uniqueness, which makes this, you know, there is no criteria on, you know, everybody's input is valid. And then this idea of this environment to express, which is this kind of what I'm trying to figure out, creativeness. So from SSS, a facilitator, this is pretty much what I'm interested in doing. What am I hoping to get? What's my process? As a sense of how do I develop the process to take the person through? <coughs> how do my intentions manifest? As a sense of what do they, what is the activity? How did this activity transform the participant? And then how does the participant transformation affect the project outcome? It goes back to me about the person participating in the workshop. So how do I do this? And is this a good way to do it? So that's the kind of what I'm trying to get from, from everybody. So any ideas from you? How do I make the creative space supportive? Is it the same list as thresholds? Or is it a different list? Do I just look at the thresholds and say, okay, I've got to figure out this and figure out that, figure out... Or... What is the creative space? I think it's that there's something about leaving one world and entering another world. So that sense of leaving sort of the real world into the imaginal world. So I'm leaving something behind as I walk into the space. <laughs> Without the peyote. Without the what? Peyote. <laughs> Without the peyote. Yes. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to keep it civil here. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, okay. I'm feeling comfortable. Comfortable? <laughs> Is that providing to you coffee or yes. nice chairs? <laughs> Natural light. <coughs> what is no? Explain <laughs> comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is like no. I think that uh, oh. refreshments. There are something you can you cannot be creative if you are hungry. I think this is something that we just A B C. Or sitting in a nice chair. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's more space. like uh, right. having uh, I don't know comfortable environment. Uh, you have to create uh, environment that you feel uh, relaxed and. Uh, I think trust is another, and keeps yeah, you around, yeah. I think trust is okay. Trusting yourself in that environment, also trust the environment to support you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a two-way process. Well, well and, and, and this is something that I sometimes think about, is that how much do I have to tell you about me in order for you to trust me? But also, I think, yeah. think a one-stop shot, for example, if you have one creative session with a group of people, yeah. trust isn't going to be... It's, it's created over time, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's a collaborative process. So if you have one session, then you're not necessarily going to have that trust unless you go back in and they become familiar and they feel secure <coughs> and they start. Then they start. You know, they have experience having offered something. They realise then it's not going to be picked to pieces and they're not going to be made to look silly. But in actual fact, they're going to, you know, you said validate individual uniqueness. You're almost validating their contribution. Okay. Uh, validation of contribution. Does that sound like yoga English? Mm -hmm. Validation of contribution. Can I, can I pitch one in which yeah. comes back to your spiritual point? I once worked with a lady who worked, used what are called Laurentian principles from very ancient spiritual traditions. 
And her starting point with her process was grief. And it's and when you're working with people wanting, usually they're brought into a creativity workshop because something's wrong. Okay. You always have to, in my experience, you actually have to air that. You have to get the fears mm -hmm. out. You have to yeah. to work out what is it they brought into the room, which is the blockage, which is between you and being relaxed and being trusting. And and so there is something about validation is a good word. You have to connect with them personally, mm. but you also have to deal with the grief, mm. whatever it is for them. And often with a team, it's been a change of management or a change of values, very often in the organization, change of ownership, a loss, loss mm. of a name, a loss of a brand, mm. a, loss, a, a, a loss of identity. Yeah. So whatever that is, has to be dealt with yeah. if people are to move at, beyond that fear mm. of, of, and play. You can't play when you're grieving. Mm. It's a big one, but it's really, really wow. important. And the, the, we probably could dig out some movies on that. All right. But I do recommend this. It's a very, okay. very powerful wow. process. All right. And this is where it's put to practice. Kind of having an important mm -hmm. time dedicated to an activity. Okay. We are now into coffee time. But can I be silly if, if HSBC calls me? You can in the workshop. What? You can in the workshop. That's okay. what, if that's what they're hiring you to do. Okay. Well, do we look at yeah. Neil? What's he doing? He's making people laugh. Yeah, but is it about laughter? Yeah. There is something about laughter. Yeah. Which Malarkey, Malarkey proved the point. Mr. Malarkey. Well, so that's expectations. We're coming with an expectation to... Yeah. We, we see creativity very often. It's associated with fun yeah. and enjoyment. Yeah, the trouble with being a shaman in the creative space is there is an identity associated with shaman and shaman. Do so I tackle expectations or support or challenge? What's my, relation, what's my relation with the audience uh, uh, expectations? You integrate. Whew. And then what, you know, you're, as soon as, don't forget, six seconds. Is, is, we've signed one up in six seconds. So you have to embody what it is that you are standing for. Six okay. seconds, that's what we do. Alrighty. Anyway, we're done, we're out of time. So, uh, thank you. Sorry, I'm not an apple time. So this is just something I kind of came up with as a sense of trying to focus on, on this idea of creativity as a set of attitudes. Not a skill. Not medium-based or not medium-focused. Not focusing on your skill with the medium but an attitude that we can kind of teach, encourage, to just say, okay, let's start with attitude. And then from that attitude, we can move into whatever medium it is. If it's a brand, if it's the accounting, if it's vision statement for the company, if it's employment policy, if it's stagnant of the boss, is this, or if it's just the way we cook and clean and relate to everyone else. So, I'm way into coffee. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with me. And I really appreciate your input. So, you have a little comment card that has a little slit for your business card. So, please feel free to write your comments and share them with me at any point today. Thank you very much.